Coming up on Inside California Education. The planetarium is nothing more than a place where kids can visualize things. Let's visit one of the only planetariums on a school campus in the state. Discover how the Spark Center in Santa Rosa is inspiring students to consider careers in science. Nice to meet you guys. Welcome to APU. Again, my name is Daniel. I work at admissions at APU. That's where you go to apply to college. Join a group of fourth graders as they tour a college campus in Southern California. It's part of a long-standing partnership between the district and college that's changing lives. This is going to be the multi-purpose cafeteria with the outdoor seating over here. Plus, building schools of the future. See what it takes to imagine, design, and build a new school that fits the needs of today's students. It is a very rare relationship that we have a ship that's moored to a school, and this is like an extension of our classroom. And meet high schoolers who are learning construction skills by restoring the USS Lucid, an old naval ship that's being transformed into a museum in Stockton. It's all next on Inside California Education. Funding for Inside California Education is made possible by... Since 1985, the California Lottery has raised more than $34 billion in supplemental funding for California's 1,100 public school districts from kindergarten through college. That's approximately $211 for each full-time student, based on $1.7 billion contributed in fiscal year 2017-18. With caring teachers, committed administrators, and active parents, every public school student can realize their dreams. The California Lottery, imagine the possibilities. The Stewart Foundation, improving life outcomes for young people through education. The planetarium show looks as professional as any you'd see at a college campus or science museum. But these aren't college students, they're high schoolers who know just how lucky they are to have a permanent planetarium on their campus. Oh, it's amazing. It's so immersive and it feels like you're there. And with the, the surround sound, it makes it even better. Below the surface, they mix with cold, deep currents that swirl around undersea ledges and mountains. It's really cool to watch it because it's not 3D, but you can't tell that there's a screen, so it really, really looks like space. This is the Spark Center at Piner High School in Santa Rosa. At its centerpiece is a 100-seat planetarium used for classes, field trips, and monthly planetarium shows open to the public. Kids are super visual and the planetarium is nothing more than a place where kids can visualize things, visualize data, visualize information and they're very attuned to that and I pander to that constantly. So how many images do you think that you took for that project total? Yeah, hundreds, yeah, hundreds. hundreds. I don't over, have a grand total. Over yeah. right Science now. teacher Kirk Kruger was pivotal in bringing this $3.8 million center to the high school. It was built from the ground up and opened its doors in 2014. In addition to the planetarium, there's a research grade telescope in an observatory, a seismograph reading movements up to 22 feet below ground, a wind turbine, solar panels, and state-of-the-art classroom. The uniqueness of the Spark Center on high school campus is uh, pretty much through the roof. <laughs> it's about as unique as you can get. For one total package, all together in one place with the um, quality and kind of the most high-tech equipment, I think Punter High School is kind of head and shoulders above most places in the state. So there's the back side of the moon that you have never seen before. The facilities we have here feel almost college level. It feels so high level with our observatory and the planetarium. Everything feels so, so advanced. Matthew enrolled at Piner High School after seeing the Spark Center as a middle schooler. He's among a group of science students using the telescope for an advanced research project. I have been working on collecting data for a cataclysmic variable star, which is a binary star system. You have a white dwarf and then you have a regular star, and the white dwarf's gravity is so strong, it's actually ripping the gas from the other star. 
Students are excited, and when they get to do actual work with the facility, take actual data, like let's say working with the observatory, then it becomes even more exciting. It's not like the same thing as like, whoa, look at the planetarium dome, but when they sit there and they really look at working with real scientific raw data, learning things about, in this case, the universe, it kind of enhances that level of kind of really deep appreciation. Students get a chance to apply that scientific data to a real-world rocket program. It's a joint effort of Piner High School, Sonoma State University, and NASA. Basically, it is having kids use uh, professional rocketry to design, engineer, build, uh, put on the rockets electronic equipment. It's, it's STEM in a nutshell. It's giving kids all sorts of different experiences. I told you it was a fast burn. The Spark Center isn't just for science students. It's open to any teacher on campus who wants to hold a class there. You might find a Greek mythology lesson one day, a physics lecture the next. And the public regularly stops by to hear guest speakers and watch evening planetarium shows. An important part of this whole project was to create a culture at our school. And not only that, but to create a culture with our community. It's working. Enrollment at the school is up by 30% since the Sparks Center opened. Several students say the center has opened their eyes to possible career paths and demonstrated that anyone can succeed in STEM fields. It's a male-dominated space. Um, it's really important to get more women involved in science and in the STEM field and to break that stereotype and to break that barrier between genders is very important to get young girls involved and to let them know that they can and they will, you know, succeed as well as men. Educators believe the Spark Center is much more than a building. It's a place where imagination and scientific exploration come together to inspire young minds. Kids were coming to us and it's like the curiosity had been beaten out of them. And science is a bad word, you know, it's hard and math is hard and I can't do this. And uh, so we're trying to reach our kids that come to Piner to get them to see that it's not scary and it's not hard and anybody can do it. I think the Spark Center does a wonderful job kind of, for me, symbolizing what I think all learning should be. And the focus should be on experiential, hands-on application of knowledge. As a student and as you're learning, book work is not the best. Being in this type of environment where you get the telescope, you get the planetarium, you get to be immersed in all of this uh, knowledge and resources, it just makes learning so much easier and so much more fun. How do you spark a love of science in a child? For Albert Einstein, it was a compass his father gave him when he was bedridden with an illness at age five. Einstein spent hours twisting the compass, marveling at how the needle always pointed north. Take a look around your house to see what items you might have to inspire the next generation of scientists. Once you guys finish elementary, then you'll go to high school, come to college. Uh, the fun thing about the dorms, guys, is that every student can kind of pick and choose how you want to set up your room. So if you want to set up a, a, a bunk bed, you can do that sweet. If you want to put in a couch in your room, that's awesome. You guys can do that too. This college dorm room may be small, but it made a big impression on this group of fourth graders. What was good about the dorms was you get to do things yourself and like put things up and you get to design how your dorm, whatever you want your dorm to be. As these kids take a tour of Azusa Pacific University, they begin to see possibilities of living independently, of socializing, of being in college. And that's precisely the point. College is very abstract for a lot of my students. 
Most would be the first to attend college in their family. So this brings it into the concrete world for them at, as opposed to the abstract world. Otherwise, it really seems like a dream, something they see in a movie or something they see in a TV show. It's not reality, it's fantasy. But it takes that fantasy and makes it a reality for them. Azusa Pacific University is a private college in the San Gabriel Valley. They partnered with the Azusa Unified School District on a nine-week program called CHAMP. CHAMP program, which stands for College Headed and Mighty Proud, began with an idea that if we expose students at a very young age to a college-going culture, that we can have an impact in their future lives. The program started 28 years ago and over 13,000 local elementary students have gone through the CHAMP program where they're learning about college readiness, goal setting, and really instilling a future um, and a hope for university. The CHAMP program begins in the classroom for all 400 of the district's fourth graders. They meet weekly with the college students from Azusa Pacific University who are enrolled in a course called Diversity in the Classroom. Last week we talked about college activities and what living on campus is like. Next week I think we'll be talking about college applications. Jada Javier is a college mentor with the program. She says the message really comes to life on the week the kids get to see the college campus with their very own eyes. Did you guys see those dorms over there? Yeah, yeah that's where I live. Yeah, that's where I live. No, not the skeleton, <laughs> but I know which one you're talking about. The CHAMP program really gives you such a great opportunity to practice how to be inclusive, how to get to know your students in a personal way, and just how to cater to people who are different. What really makes this program stand out is the fact that it's college students who are making connections with our students. Because without that, I think it would be just another curriculum, just another tour. But having that special person come to see you every week for nine weeks is what, what I think really makes it stand out. At the end of the program, the school district and the college hold a graduation ceremony with all of the pomp and circumstance of a real college graduation. We invite the parents and the community to rally around these kids who walk across the stage and hear their name called out, future teacher majoring in liberal studies, and they get to see this vision and hope for the future that maybe other people in their family haven't gotten to experience. Azusa Pacific University guarantees admission to any student in the district who meets the minimum requirements. The college also sets aside scholarships just for local residents. But the bigger goal is to set kids on any college path, whether at a two-year or four-year university. And organizers say fourth grade is an ideal time to plant the idea. Once they hit fourth grade, they're more independent. They're, they're thinking for themselves more. They're taking charge of their learning, and it's just the perfect time for them to um, consider these things. I've been starting to think about college, and my thoughts were that I kind of want to go now. I think our tour today was great because we like learned new stuff and we saw these new things. My favorite part was uh, seeing the turtle exhibit. The fourth graders, college students, and organizers all agree. Today's college visit day was a success, bringing to life a whole new world of opportunities. We're going to college. They were saying after today, they are so excited to apply for college and are so excited for what that's going to be like. And to me, you know, like that's the whole goal of this program is to inspire kids to want to go to college and to want to pursue it. And so the fact that APU Visit Day has kind of brought that desire in them makes me really happy and just, it's really heartwarming. College Still ahead on Inside California Education. Step aboard an historic Navy ship in Stockton that's being restored room by room by students interested in the construction trade. But first, let's visit a brand new school in Woodland and discover what happens when parents, teachers, and administrators get a chance to design a school from the ground up.
There's a reason Spring Lake Elementary School in the Northern California town of Woodland looks sparkly clean and brand spanking new. That's because it is. The school, which opened in the fall of 2018, had been a decade in the making. Along with hundreds of new homes came the need for new schools, and that posed an exciting opportunity for parents. It's not something that happens very often and being able to have you know, a voice in what happened and how we developed the school. They kind of said, what kind of school do you want to create, which was really cool. And as a committee, we talked about what, it, what were we interested in. Three years before this campus broke ground, a committee made up of parents and teachers began looking at how to create a school that would be well equipped for decades to come. And so we were trying to think of ways that it would be moving into the future. What are you going to need? Um, what are you not going to need? <laughs> they decided the future would require steam. The educational approach focused on science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Veteran educator Robin Miller was brought in as principal to help make the committee's dream a reality. I feel like when I was hired to, to be the principal of this school, I needed to think about the future because it's a brand new school from the, in the ground up and how often does that happen? And so I wanted to think like, what are we preparing our kids for? Everything from the outdoor classrooms to the rolling monitors to the chairs they sit on were created with the future in mind. We just tried to make it so that there was a lot of options. So the rooms have tons of plugs, tons of places to add to it so that as the school grows and as technology changes, there's just more options on what you can do. All of the classrooms have the latest technology and furniture that moves, allowing teachers to use the space in different ways and energetic kids to focus without being confined to a chair. We have yoga balls for them to kind of sit and roll around on and kind of bounce gently on. We also have wiggle stools where they're able to kind of lean um, in a safe way and kind of move around while they're learning and doing their activity. Across campus, the second grade classroom looks very similar. There's no front of the room. These classes are designed for movement. We are trying to make a craft that can hold 10 tiles or more and float for five seconds or more. It's not an easy feat, but part of the Spring Lake philosophy is that failure creates opportunity. And kids thrive on the opportunity to succeed on their own. Trial and error is a big thing. Um, so learning from your mistakes, going back and revising and making a change and fixing it and discovering what went wrong instead of being told what went wrong. In reading a book, you don't know if it's actually real or not. And if we experiment, we know what's, what can flow, what can sink, what's good, what's bad. You could say Spring Lake itself is a large-scale experiment that parents, teachers, and students are finding successful. My kids love coming to school. It's never a fight. We hop on our bikes in the morning, we get here, and they are just excited. So it's been great. And this is just the beginning. Phase one includes transitional kindergarten through the third grade, 170 students in all. This is going to be the multi-purpose cafeteria with the outdoor seating over here. When it's finished, hopefully in the fall of 2020, this campus will have more than 400 students all the way up to sixth grade. I think it's awesome. And while many of these kids may be too young to understand why a new campus is so special, they do know that something here is different. They're learning in a place where mistakes can be made and big messes, all of which makes the future seem like a whole lot of fun. Today, the average age of school buildings in the United States is 44 years. The end of World War II brought a surge in school building construction as young soldiers returned home and started families. Nearly half of all schools in the country were built in the 1950s and 1960s to accommodate the baby boomer generation. The first thing students do when they arrive at the San Joaquin Building Futures Academy is clock in. It's not just for show. These teens are getting paid minimum wage as part of a youth built construction class taught by John Van Huesty. I'm gonna have the three of you working up in the museum. Okay, we're gonna be prepping up the museum for more paint. After a safety briefing, the students head over to their construction site for the day. 
a 65-year-old former naval warship docked just about 100 yards away. Okay, so a couple things to be aware of. Do not step in those two circles. Okay, okay we'll make sure not to follow those circles. There's another open hole back there. Oh my God. Everything else is completely safe, okay? <laughs> this ship, the USS Lucid, was built in 1953 and is one of only two minesweepers like it left in the world. It was in bad shape when David Rakovich first laid eyes on it in nearby Bradford Island. But he had a vision to restore the ship to its former glory and turn it into a museum for the city of Stockton. We researched uh, where we could put this vessel here on the Deepwater Channel and we discovered this dock here at this former Naval Reserve Center, which is now the Building Futures Academy, was sitting here unused. So we approached the superintendent of the County Office of Education, explained to him what we wanted to do, and we wanted to incorporate students. So the practices they're learning in the schools next door, they could practice here aboard the ship. Some students were a little hesitant when they began working on the ship. When I first seen the ship, I got scared because it's like really old and I know that it's probably been through a lot and it's not really stable probably. So when we were touring the ship at first, I was like, no way I'm going on that ship. <laughs> I was so scared. And then when I got on here, I was like, I'm gonna be on the ship every day now. Like, it's pretty fun. The Building Futures Academy is a high school dropout credit recovery program. It's run by the San Joaquin County Office of Education. It targets at-risk students, giving them a chance to earn a diploma and job skills at the same time. I was, I'm not going to say a troubled kid, but when I first got to Building Futures Academy, um, I was sort of trying to find myself and it just felt like somewhere I can escape and let um, my positivity and show to people that I'm not really a bad kid. So here I feel more in my comfort zone. I feel like I don't have to like impress people or act a certain way, like I just be myself. Um, some of the students are, they're unsure of themselves. They don't necessarily have the experience with work. They don't know what it's like to be consistent and um, get up every day and show up and put in a full day of actual strenuous labor. I um, mean, when they get that experience for the first time, it can be a very rude awakening. And those students, they're able to persevere through those things. And when they come out on the other side, there's a sense of, of confidence, there's a sense of independence that they're able to, to gain from that experience and they understand that yeah if I can do that and I can work on this ship that takes some skill and it takes a lot of effort then they know that they can be successful afterwards. Yeah. And what you could do is you can come up here and we'll knock out all the webs with a vacuum tank up on top of all these sections right here. John worked as a general contractor for 20 years before joining the Building Futures Academy. He teaches the students the pre-apprenticeship program required for them to join a union. So they leave this school and go straight into a union job. So they're leaving the minimum wage job that we're giving them and they go straight into a uh, potential $20 to $24 job with union benefits and, and a career. Caesar wants to join a union after he graduates. He says he's learned a lot more than construction skills during his time on the naval ship. How to dress, what to wear, what not to wear. Professionalism, like to learn to switch it off. Like I can go act a little goofy with my family, but when I come here, I have to act professional. We've been working on the uh, museum up there because it needs to be sanded and prepped for paint. And recently we put up the spotlight on top of the boat. I feel accomplished, you know? The interior of the ship is about 70% restored. Rooms that were once nothing but rotting wood now look like they did when the ship served her country during the Vietnam War and beyond. There's a sick bay and pharmacy, gleaming sinks and bathrooms, bunks that can sleep 33 sailors, a plush captain's cabin, and a beautifully restored helm complete with working electronics. So to see the work that has been accomplished, the level of authenticity, really hits home when we have veterans that served on this or sister ships of it and they haven't seen one for 50 years and they come in here and they'll go to this helm or they'll go to one of these instruments and brings tears to their eyes because it's so real to them. It's not just veterans and volunteers who are grateful for the opportunity to restore this piece of history. The students understand the value too. Um, there's a sense of pride 
um, there is the sense that they're going to be able to go back and the, they're part of the dream that once the ship is actually um, out on the waterfront in downtown Stockton, they're going to be able to show their children and they're going to be able to point to it with pride and be able to kind of talk about um, what role they had in that. It's been a, a very cool experience for students to be able to get hands-on um, construction experience, um, at the same time understanding that they have a service to the community that's going to actually directly impact their own families in the future. If you'd like more information about the program, log on to our website, InsideCalEd.org. We have video from all of our shows, and you can connect with us on social media. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Inside California Education. So there's the backside of the moon that you have never seen before. Three, two, one. Guys see those dorms over there? Yeah. Uh, the fun thing about the dorms, guys, is that every student can kind of pick and choose how you want to set up your room. This is going to be the multi-purpose cafeteria with the outdoor seating over here. I think it's awesome. I'm going to have the three of you working up in the museum. Funding for Inside California Education is made possible by... Since 1985, the California Lottery has raised more than $34 billion in supplemental funding for California's 1,100 public school districts from kindergarten through college. That's approximately $211 for each full-time student, based on $1.7 billion contributed in fiscal year 2017-18. With caring teachers, committed administrators, and active parents, every public school student can realize their dreams. The California Lottery, imagine the possibilities. The Stewart Foundation, improving life outcomes for young people through education. Additional funding for Inside California Education is made possible by these organizations supporting public education.